All right, we are back with Mahjong Champ, Mahjong Shark, Mamoru Akasaka. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Most, the most terrifying Mahjong player of all time. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't be so greedy, Oishi. Oh. Yeah, I need to get some rest. No whoring today. Oh. Oh, that's not pleasant. Where have I heard the name Kuroda sound before? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh, that's not pleasant. Let's not crush. Let's not crush faces. Construction guy? You're a good. You're a construction guy. Are you the construction manager? Are you the construction manager? Satosa. Respect of Oishi's uh, Mahjong circles. <laughs> so we did get something good out of that meeting, too. At least we, the player, did. Mamoru Akasaka didn't, but. That's gotta be the construction manager. The Sonozaki girl. The Sonozaki girl. Mion was a big player in the uh, protests, right? So it makes sense that the Sonozaki girl is uh, bothering him if he's the construction manager, or at least working on the construction. Left turn shadow proof technique. Hmm. By not having to answer that, then <laughs> you've already answered it. Yeah. Yes, you got your groove back. Your balls are big again. All right. Okay. Kinsman meetings. I'm guessing it involves the three families. Oh. Booze all around. Yeah, three families. Oh. Yep. Empress Sonozaki.
Right. But she has her good side, yeah. She has her demon side. Kimiyoshi's in the Furudes. Kimiyoshi Kiichiro, yeah. Then priest wife Enrica. Cause she's Rika. She's still really young at this point. Lay on her stomach and put her legs under Oreo's blanket. Oh. So she's gotta be. If she was this loved, even when her fam parents were alive, then she's gotta be some kind of incarnation of Oyashiro-sama. So, some sort of prophecy that, hey... Something that'll, that they can bank the whole future of the village on. If she can just be that casual around Sonozaki or... Uh, I don't see any way, other way around that. They're everywhere. <laughs> Electoral votes, yeah. The fate of the boy, isn't it? Hmm. Oh? Audio suggested it. Okay. Yes. That's the one expense they can't get away with losing. Well, this is a cool view. Hmm. And, oh, oh, he married into the three families, so the wife is the true Furu there. Okay.
Yeah. Oops, sorry. Who will crumble first so we can kill them? Yeah. Still the same sharp words. She's been practicing well. That's always the good ruling tactic. Yeah. Ding. Oh. That's quite a... Hmm. That's intense. Some serious shit, man. Alright, what's next? Silence. Okay. Naturally. Oh. So the family sort of married into their Yakuza connections? Huh. There we go. So someone in the Onigafuchi Guardians is responsible for it. If they did it. figure it out. They know because they did it. We're going to find that out right about now, aren't we? True. There is that. Well, laugh. Okay, at least you acknowledge that. That's good.
All right. But someone still knows that it happened. Her son, the Yakuza boss, told Mion, who told Oryu, son, the Yakuza boss, knows something about it, and... It, yeah. This part's getting good. This part is getting good. It's all very murky business practices they deal with. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's your problem. Certainly a start. At least we know we're in the right we're in the right place. It hasn't been lately, that's interesting. Oh. And that's about as good as confirming it, also, but... Alright. Oh, hey, there's a cop here! means that someone's looking into it. They know that someone's looking into it, it? don't they? Oh! It's a mystery. <laughs> Very fresh. Fresh meat. <laughs> Bye. Huh. Yeah, we don't want that. That's pretty dicey. Now that we know that... Highly possible. Rika. She seemed awfully interested. And then... Then...
then we had our little creepy smile instant. Highly possible. Then they all welcomed you at the headquarters. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Possible. Again, highly possible. <laughs> So many questions. And they asked her if she had someone in mind, too. I think that's important. So she had to know. Yeah, what the hell am I supposed to do now, son? We have to rely on Oishi. Everyone's watching. We'll be right back with more Higarashi. Game of choosing a... Oh, these look like they're gonna be good. All juice of my sniffles come through with allergy season. All right. Yeah. I ran into him yesterday at a restaurant in Ginza. The subject came up. Oh. Inu guy. That's the minister's name. He's not uh, happy about public security's actions. Because he knows that public security is investigating his grandkids' kidnapping. Oh boy. <laughs> Show it up like a raisin. Huh. How naive you are. Of course there are. Oh, good. We could always use help. Although if help comes in, that might be overstepping our boundaries. We don't want that. Oh, 
Now this is what I'm looking forward to. Do you think you can make choices in life? Some people lament. If there were clear choices in our lives, we would choose the best choices for a better future. Every time I hear such lamentations, I think that's so stupid. Given choices doesn't, don't mean anything. And there is nothing that would lead us to a better future. You don't get it? Okay, let's say there are two mysterious boxes in front of you. There are only two choices. You can open either the red box or the blue box. You'll probably hesitate. If you have to open either the red or the blue, blue box, you want to open whichever is more beneficial to you. That's only natural. Consider the shape of the boxes, the feeling you get from each box. Take everything under consideration and then finally make a decision. Which box would you choose? The red or the blue? With traffic signals, the color red means danger. That doesn't guarantee the safety of the color blue. Maybe it's a trick to have you be cautious about the red one and open the blue one instead. A trick. Maybe what's in the box isn't anything beneficial. Maybe it's something you don't even want to have. Like a Furby. Okay, you're confused. So confused about the red or the blue. You may even want another choice night now. To leave. But no. You must open one or the other. When you choose the box, the other one disappears. So you'll never know what's in the other box. Alright. Come on. Pick one. Huh. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, son! <laughs> oh, yeah! Let's open the red box. Alright. He's of caramel. Oh, come on. When I first started this, I I gotta admit what I was thinking of was Newcomb's paradox. The other box is already gone. But Newcomb's paradox. gives you the option to... I think Newcomb's Paradox shows you what's in one box and gives you the option to take both boxes or just the other box. Actually, plot twist. Only one chance. One chance, my ass. Oh, yeah. We'll just load. And it's probably going to give us the same outcome. Because that's the idea. Chewing gum. Oh! Right. So this is definitely the same uh, voice that was talking to us earlier about this guy. Oh. I tell you what, I fucking love this. I love this. 
I love this so far. What? Who died? Ikazawa. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, a demon sympathy. Yep, they definitely know about it. Yeah. serious. Meon seems oddly, uh... Huh. So are they going to release the boy? Or... Something worse? This is when... Oreo suggested releasing the boy. Mian didn't seem like she agreed. That might just be me, but... I'm sensing tension there. Whoa! I tell you what, I fucking love this arc so far. I don't know, maybe just because there's no slow build this time, it just dumps you right into, hey, there's a mystery. It is a mystery, and we need to solve mystery. There is definitely mysterious things going on here. There's no shade of normalcy thrown over it. Definitely easier to get into than probably the first two arcs. But let's see if the payoff matches that of the first three arcs. That's going to be the key point. And that's probably what all of you refer to when you say that this arc ends up underwhelming in the end. But we'll see. Until then, I'm really loving this so far. So until next time, until then...